In this video, I'm going to show how to validate JSON against a schema in a C-sharp Razor page. Now, why is it important to validate JSON? Well, keep in mind that in today's business landscape, we typically are aggregating data from many different sources. And a lot of this is user-generated data. If you think of social media sites or places where people show, share their look or uh, talk about where they ate or anything like that. So we're aggregating data from different sources. And it's important that we know that the data is in the correct form and in the correct shape because bad data in could cause disruptions in our system. So these are the steps we're going to walk through and I'm going to jump right in right after this slide. First we need to generate a schema from existing JSON. Then we're going to add validation rules to that schema. We'll import the schema into Visual Studio 2022. We will add the Newtonsoft schema plugin, parse the schema, parse the JSON, validate the JSON, and then look for errors. The data I'm going to use here is plant data from the Cincinnati Zoo and Botanical Gardens. A couple hundred plants I have GPS there. I used this in a previous video, and you can see here's the uh, stream of data. And in that video, I showed how to consume the data, parse it, and show it in a web page. So, one thing we want to do is generate a schema, and we can actually do that pretty easily given that we have some JSON to start with. But here's one consideration. We could take this entire unit of JSON or even a bigger unit of JSON and, and parse it, but that's kind of cumbersome. So what I recommend is just take a small sample like this, but be careful because square bracket indicates the start of an array and that has to be closed with a closed square bracket, which we will indeed see at the very bottom of this list. So if you're taking just a subset, you want to remember to add your own closed square bracket and also take off any trailing commas. So I've already done that and I put it into this JSON viewer where we can take a look and see that this is a fairly flat data set. We have a series of objects, they all have the same attributes, but the attributes have different values. Now I took the same sample of JSON and I put it into QuickType and in my previous video I generated a client for C Sharp. Well guess what? Generating a JSON schema is very easy. We simply change it from C Sharp to JSON schema and this gives us a description of that JSON and it's figured out what's a number that could have a floating point What's a whole number that would be an integer, like a plant ID or a specimen ID, or a floating point, by the way, would be something like latitude or longitude, where we know it's going to have decimal value. And then it's also going to figure out what's a string. This is perfect. So I'm going to copy this and add it to my project. We'll go ahead and say JSON schema file, and I'll call this specimen schema. It gives me a little sample here, but you know what? I'm going to delete that and paste in what I got from QuickType. Now let's go back to our index.cshtml file. This is where we were consuming the JSON previously without validation. So now we're going to add validation. First we need to read the file that we just created and I'm going to put it inside of this if test where I know I have a JSON string because that's what we're validating. System.io file read all text. We'll simply open that file and read it all. And we need to pass this into our schema validation, which we can do by wrapping this entire thing in passing it into a method. The method is jschema.parse, where jschema is a class that's provided to us by the Newtonsoft schema package. I likely don't already have that. Let's just see. Yeah, okay. Oh, well, it actually gave me a really helpful hint here. One of the options because it knows where this comes from, is to install the package Newtonsoft J Schema. So I'm going to go ahead and pick that. And after just a few moments, it's installed it, and it has been kind enough to add the using statement as well. So we're ready to go. Let's save this schema into a variable. Alt-Enter and introduce local is probably the best way to do that. Uh, J Schema is just fine, or we can call it just schema if we want. Next part, we need to look at our JSON. If it starts with a square bracket, we need to use something called JArray. On the other hand, if it starts with a curly, we need to start, we need to use something called JObject. So just be aware, JArray or JObject, the choice you make will be based on what that very first character is. And you see that my first character is a square bracket, so I'll use JArray. 
is a parse function, and we simply need to pass a string of JSON into it, which we already have on line number, looks like 39. And once again, let's save this into a variable. The easy way to do that is alt enter, and then choose introduce local, and we'll simply call it JSON array. Now to validate is fairly straightforward, but it does require two steps. First of all, we need to declare a list of strings that will hold any validation errors that occur while it's validating. Secondly, we need to call an isValid method that will return true if it's valid or false if not. We need to call that method on our JSON array that we just created, that variable we just created. We need to pass in the schema, and we need to pass in that list of strings that will hold any errors. So you see we have declared our list of validation events here. Now on the JSON array, which we got from parsing the JSON above, we invoke is valid, we pass the schema, and then we use the out keyword in validation events to indicate that we're passing this collection in and we're interested in the outcome from that collection. Now, if the JSON is valid, this will evaluate to true, and it will run this step where we go ahead and make objects out of the JSON, we assign that to the specimens collection, and then we return the specimens collection back to our CS CSHTML page where it can be rendered. On the other hand, if the JSON schema does not validate, it will take us down to this else part. Normally, I'm not a fan of console.writeLine uh, as opposed to using actual logging, but in this case, I just need a place to set a breakpoint. So what I'm going to do is iterate over that collection of strings that represents the validation errors. And inside of this loop, I'm going to call console.writeLine, and I'm going to simply pass in that string that represents any validation errors. This scenario will make a program that will work for us either way. So in other words, if the JSON is valid, it populates that collection of specimens, passes it back to the CSHTML. If the JSON is not valid, it goes to the else part, and it doesn't do this step where it's populating that specimen collection. However, what would happen in that case? Well, we would simply stick with what we declared on line number 35, which is an empty collection of specimens, and we'd return that back to our page. So the application would still work. It simply wouldn't show specimens. That would just kind of fail over. So let's take a look. The browser has come up and it's starting to render the page. And I snapped a breakpoint where we started to do this validation. So F10, parse our schema. F10 again, parse the JSON. Now come up with our collection of validation events. Now the real tell. Is our JSON valid according to that schema? It appears that it is. So I choose F5 to continue and our page renders as expected. Now, a couple of footnotes here. This is how it looks working when it works, but what if we add some more rules to the JSON? Will it still work and what will we see? And what if we change those rules and we force it not to work? So let's do that, step one. Let's add some more validation rules that are reasonable and should still allow the JSON to work. And then let's intentionally fail the JSON as our next step. Now, one programming note here. I noticed when I generated the schema that it treated address as an enumeration. So in other words, there were only so many defined values for address. That's not what I wanted, so I simply turned uh, address to a simple string. So if you're using the same feed as me and you got an error on that last exercise, just check the address. You might want to change it to a string from an enumeration. Now, let's see how we can add some more restrictions to validate our JSON, because right now, all we're doing is validating the data type, which isn't very effective. It'll tell us whether we have a whole number or a decimal or a string, but it won't actually validate the range of those numbers. And that's where validation can be very important, is making sure that numbers are within a reasonable range. So for latitude, I'll add a comma after the type, and then I'll say minimum in quotes, because this is JSON format, actually, so we do want to quote that. Uh, minimum is minus 100, comma, and then maximum is, we'll say, plus 100, no trailing comma on that. Uh, let's do something similar for longitude, although for longitude, the numbers are a little bit higher, so we'll go 150, 150. 
Uh, plant ID, I'm just going to say minimum 100. Uh, sorry, minimum zero, because plant ID is a, a unique identifier. It's an automated, automatically generated unique identifier, so that should never be less than zero. As a matter of fact, same rule goes for specimen, and we could keep going here. A uh, genus, you know, let's look at these. Uh, specimen ID, yeah, we're going to have that common name. Not all plants have a common name, so that's optional. That's fine. Species, almost all plants have species, but not all. So we're going to leave that one as optional. Address notes, those are optional. But genus, all plants should have a genus. So I'm going to add a few um, uh, validators here. So it should be at least two characters, probably not more than 65. And if you're wondering where I got these, uh, json-schema.org has a list of the different things we can put in a schema. Uh, minimum, exclusive minimum, so on and so forth. Uh, so a subtle difference between these two. Minimum is greater than or equal to. Exclusive minimum is greater than exclusively. And then length, max length, min length, that's for strings. So we want to be careful. Notice that there are certain validations for strings. Pattern, very powerful there. Uh, and there are different validations for numbers. Multiple of, that one's pretty cool. If you want to do only evens, you could say multiples of two. Uh, multiples of 10 if you want to do something 10-based like that. So you see there's actually quite a bit that you can look at here uh, to do true JSON validation. That being said, let's go ahead and save this and let's confirm that our JSON file still validates correctly. It's entirely possible I could have mistyped something or misunderstood my own data. So let's just do a quick safety check of this. Page is loading and now we debug. Ah, look at that. It went to the if part. It's skipping the else part, so I feel really good about this. I think that we have valid JSON, and sure enough, I come over here and the page renders. So now let's try this one more time with intentionally bad validation rules. So the plants that I have GPSed are at the Cincinnati Zoo and Botanical Garden, which is about 39 or 40 degrees latitude. If I put a minimum of 50 degrees latitude, all of these plants would fail. That's a simple one. Page begins to render. Our breakpoint hits, and let's watch very carefully here as I choose F10 and F10 and our validation against. Remember, we expect this one to fail because I put in uh, some validation rules that simply won't validate. So I anticipate it's going to skip the if test and jump to the else. And sure enough, here we are in the else. And notice what it's doing is it's iterating over these validation events, and it's printing out the event. Uh, one at a time. Now the error message here is very descriptive if you can see where I'm mousing over. Float 39.144 is less than the minimum value of 50. Path 0 lat, so our first element, line 2, position 25. So it tells us very specifically what failed validation and where to find it. If you find that you're having a hard time parsing JSON, something's going wrong, look very carefully at these validation, mes validation messages because they tend to be very precise on what the error is and where you can go to see the error. So every one of these specimens are going to fail because they're all below 50 degrees latitude. So I could keep going through this over and over again, but suffice it to say, I think we know what's going on. Uh, I go back and I take a look at the page. You notice the page rendered. It simply has no data. So in this video, we've seen how to generate a schema from JSON, add that schema to our project, validate JSON against the schema, add more restrictive schema validation rules and watch it pass, add more restrictive schema validation rules that are incorrect and watch it fail. Where typically what will happen is the schema rules should be correct. It's the incoming data that likely won't match that. So if I had a specimen at latitude 2,149, that should fail because there is no such latitude on planet Earth of that nature. And that's why schemas are really good because it puts a little guard in to make sure that the data that's coming into our system is in the right shape and is predictable and will not pose a risk to our system. So as always, I hope this video was helpful and I look forward to reading your comments. Thank you.